Her impressive resume includes gritty, action-packed dramas such as The Sopranos, Law and Order, and CSI New York, and big screen films directed by Spike Lee, Quentin Tarantino, and Oliver Stone. Now she is three seasons in as the sultry FBI agent on USA's hit show, Graceland. Here is Vanessa Ferlito to tell us about the high-stakes investigative life of being deeply undercover. Ooh, undercover. <laughs> welcome, welcome. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. great, thank you. Good. Now, before we get to Graceland, you have to talk about your big break, your first big role, your debut role was in The Sopranos. What yes. was it like to work with such a timeless cast right out of the gate? Crazy. I was, uh, they were sending me out on auditions like for just commercials and I never booked a commercial. And then one day the agent said, you know, we're going to send you for The Sopranos and I booked it and then, you know, it was James Gandolfini. <laughs> I didn't have any scenes with him but I met uh -huh. him and he was lovely and, you know. All of them, Dre, incredible. Wow. Now, you have a history of playing in investigative crime shows, so mm -hmm. from Law & Order and 24 to your current role on Graceland. Now, do you feel as if your gritty Brooklyn upbringing and your mysterious look made you perfect for mm -hmm. these roles? Well, I was only an undercover, I was only a cop in CSI and Graceland. Law & Order, I was like a thief. Remember, I stole the Birkin bag? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And then 24, I was the, uh, from Mexico. I was, you know, a drug lord's daughter or whatever, so... I don't know, maybe, yeah, you know, I got a little swag, I'm from Brooklyn, oh, I like that goes, I don't know, <laughs> maybe, you know, yeah, I think so. Uh, I think I would have been a great cop in real life, actually. Ooh. Like a, like a great undercover, I'm not seriously, you... I'm always so intrigued by that whole lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's funny, I, I always tell myself I shouldn't watch, I shouldn't watch the news, I shouldn't read this terrible stuff, but then I'm so drawn to it. It's mm. terrible. So when you're I would have been good at it. When you're playing these roles, you're like, yeah, this is what the real cops would do. Yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, when we first started the show, I sat down with undercover agents, and mm. they just told me these crazy stories, like, just unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, and like you don't want to hear... What are some of the stories they told you? I mean, you know, stuff you can't really... Just stuff with kids and stuff oh, you don't really, really. you know. Oh. You know, they're undercover for yeah. sometimes, you know, months, year, mm -hmm. years at a time. I mean, look at Donnie Brasco, and they see just the unfat. Mm. Like, you just can't even imagine. Right. So you can't really that... do anything about it, because then it'll break their cover, That's you know? That's true. Right. So you have to yeah. go along with it. So wow. how did that help you shape your role? How did having that, that experience with them? I, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you just kind of get in there and do your thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they tell you what they tell you, but as an actor, you got to kind of go deep down and just get it. Mm -hmm. Either you can get it or you can't. I don't know. Uh, let's take a look yeah. at you getting it in Graceland. <laughs> we have a clip. <laughs> you never once got angry at me, you know that? What? My best friend put you through the ring. I'll accuse you of murder. <laughs> it's all hugs. No harm, no foul, Charlie. That's because there was none. No, there was harm and there was foul, and I gotta wear it. I gotta wear it till it fits. It's driving me crazy. How am I supposed to go in with Solano? How am I supposed to go anywhere when I got my line so crossed that I'm pointing fingers at you? Mm, wow. Pointing fingers at everybody. Now, on Graceland, <laughs> it's you and a few other federal agents. You're living in this uh, house together yes. while you're undercover. And it's over the three years your character, Three Seasons, has really grown. Tell us how your character like has evolved. I like you saying three seasons yes. because it's it's really the second season, but I like that. You're oh. manifesting oh, the next one. Yes. Third season. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, boss. I was just asking how your character has grown since, you know, you first been on the show. You know what's funny? I feel like um, in some ways, season two, you, I feel like the viewers might think that she hasn't grown, that maybe she's regressed because mm. she doesn't, she becomes very unsure of herself because of the first season. She's made a lot of bad choices. She pointed the finger at Briggs. She was trying to get him, you know, in big trouble mm -hmm. with the whole Odin situation, although he kind of is... We, that's up in yeah. the air. We, yeah. we, don't, we don't really, really know. know. <laughs> we don't really know, but I think she was, you know, on to something, you know. But, um, I, you know, I think she's just really unsure of herself and mm -hmm. insecure and scared to go back out there and, and do it with the boys. But she has mm -hmm. no choice because Mike is in control of the whole house and he kind of pushes her out there. Mm -hmm. Now, and your, your character also recovered from a heroin addiction last season, right? Yeah. And now, so now the undercover agents are really struggling for, like, a sense of normalcy. How, tell us more about, like, the challenges playing a character with such depth and complications. Mm, I'd have to say you'd, you'd have to in your real life have some depth and, and, and somewhat mm. of a complicated mind or whatever. I don't know, but I think, uh, you know, 
it just, I don't know, it just, it just happens. I step on that set and I become Charlie. I really don't have anything that I, I don't really prepare myself unless it's a, a very emotional role. And then I sort of, uh, you know, kind of shut down and, and I don't really play around with the boys because we play around a lot. Mm -hmm. But other than that, when I step on that set, no matter what the scene is, I just become Charlie and it's... Now, let me ask, yeah. is it a matter of drawing from your own life or completely separating yourself and, cre and like living in the character, That's creating something scary. different? That's what's scary. That's a good question. Because uh, Briggs and I have this scene, I think, in episode 10. Where it's just heart wrench. It's... The whole relationship between Briggs and I is just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. And and back to the what you said before, how does she find, like, you know, some kind of just, I don't know. I, I think she turns to Briggs a season two, mm -hmm. and they sort of give the relationship a go again. Mm -hmm. And that's how she tries to find some type of normalcy in the house. They're playing house right. in the house. Mm -hmm. um, but... Um, you know, I just, uh, I just got confused because I... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, just drawing That's from it. Well, then you go, you get lost yeah. in your character, girl. You get lost yeah. in the world. Oh, oh, so no, no but yeah. when you create yeah. that character, are you drawing from your own personal experiences or are you mm -hmm. creating I do. a separate entity I do. altogether? I well, that's the thing. And oh, that's, that's what I said was a good question because I said when I step on the set, I become Charlie. But when I have to go to a really emotional place, mm -hmm. I go to my places. Like, I'll mm -hmm. put, you know, I'll listen to some music and I think of certain things, but I also am very careful of the things that I think about, especially when it comes to my child. Mm. Things that'll bring me to that point, I have to use him, I have to use family members, and I mm. also have to be very careful of the things that I think about. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely Like with this do. manifesting thing, thing. Right. Exactly. and I believe in that, right. so. I'm gonna speak it into existence. Yeah, it's really interesting. I torture myself. Do right. I sound like I'm, tor <laughs> I tor I'm torturing no, myself no, no. right now talking about okay, it? Okay, so then let me ask you this. Who are you more like, Charlie? Or oh. You, you know, your character. Are you more similar or different, and how to Charlie? I would, I would say I'm, I'm pretty similar to Charlie. Mm. What well, way? I bring a lot of me to Charlie, mm -hmm. and I think them seeing that from season one, I, minus the hair, I'm super square. <laughs> okay. I, none of that. Not even a little know. bit. What about the weed? No, 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 no. <laughs> I you know they see they, they mm -hmm. cast you and they hope that you can step up and mm -hmm. bring this person to life and I think that I brought a little bit of me to Charlie so I am similar to her mm -hmm. would I be able to do what she does as much as I say I'd be a great FBI agent right. I don't know coming from where mm -hmm. I come from also Brooklyn you know yeah. And, you know, seeing a lot of things in my life, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'd be able to really do what Charlie mm -hmm. does. So that's where we differ. I know too much. Mm -hmm. So what did you want to be when you, want, when you were little? What did you want to do when you grew up? <laughs> Honestly, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I think I always, uh, you know, I would sing and dance and put on plays and I would mm -hmm. make my cousins, you know, I would... I would put together plays, like a whole production for the family. Cool. But I never thought I could do it or mm. I would become an actress. I don't know, you know, kids from where I'm from, I, I don't know if that really, yeah. I don't even know how I'm here now, by the way. Like, how does it happen? We called you, I, you said, I, hey, you want to come No, on the but show? really, like, what I never happen? said. What was your, what was your path? You know, I was like uh, this kind of famous club kid in the city. At the time, we were throwing this really big party that blew up, it was called Life. And they put us on the cover of New York Magazine. It was an eight page story. You would think we did brain surgery. It was like, why are we, wow. what is this, eight pages? And then from there, they would just, you know, always want us to do like a cameo in a movie here or there, mm -hmm. like James Toback, this one, that one. And then I don't know, like this agent, I was like, oh, why don't you let us represent you? I was like, oh, really? Like it was just mm -hmm. sort of like that. Happened. I never took an acting class or anything. And then that's how it happened. I started going out. It was like a, you know, a, you know, I'd go out for like commercials, never booked mm -hmm. a commercial. Maybe I was too edgy. I don't know. <laughs> You're well, a little I mean, rough around the edges. It, it's worked for you because you received God, the NAACP yes. nomination oh, yes. for your role in Undefeated. You were also on the big screen along alongside Edward Norton, Cuba Gidding Jr., yes. Al, Al Pacino of all people. He's a legend. Peace. What did you learn from working with him? One of the most humble if not the humblest actor I've ever worked with. Really? Him, Chris Walken, and Alan Arkin. They were never in their trailer, trailer mm -hmm. ever. They were always sitting outside on the street, like, 
you know, I'll be talking on the cell phone, like, super loud. Like, you're Al Pacino. Like, nowadays, nobody, <laughs> like, oh, everybody's talking about it. They're so scared. <laughs> TMZ is why. He didn't give, he was, like, he's so cool. I wow. went to see him in, uh, what's the play he was in? I'm going, forgive me, Al. A good that, play. Uh, yes. A very right. good play. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh, he's just, you know, he's like, call my cell phone. He has, like, a regular cell phone. He's like, you know. Now, apparently, wow. you have charmed more than one actor and more than one valuable person in, in Hollywood. Now, rumor has it that Quentin Tarantino once paid a visit to your set and became so enamored that he instantly cast you in a role for his film, Death Proof. Is he, that true? Yeah, he wrote the role for me. So, Vanessa wow. means butterfly. That's, mm -hmm. but, you know, hence how Beautiful. butterfly was born. Uh -huh. um, Death Proof. Mm -hmm. he, uh, we met at the airport. I was uh, filming Man of the House with Tommy Lee Jones. And uh, I don't know, I was acting up. I had a hoodie on. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, You know, he was with uh, Nikki Cat, and he introduced me to him. And I was like, oh, yeah, hi. I was probably rushing home to catch a TV show. I'm a weirdo <laughs> like that. It was Quinn Tarantino. He was like, wow. I get to the hotel. He comes behind me. Next thing you know, he's showing up on set. We became fast friends. I lent him my car. It was like, <laughs> I don't know what happened. We just became really good Friends, we started hanging out, went to clubs together. I don't know. What is it like the club with Quentin Tarantino? I got into a, actually I got into a fight with the girl in the club because like we were talking no, and I she was that. girls were falling all over him. It was just so rude. I can't. I can't I believe I'm it. telling this. No, please, <laughs> no, I like please. It. What was he like? Did he like to dance? Or was he just chilling in the he's corner drinking? Fun. What? Okay. He's just pure fun. He's quite, you know, he's a genius. Yeah. He's, he's a true. genius. You know, it doesn't like. He's the guy that remembers like a Coke commercial from 1980 with the kid in the back playing with the red fire truck. He knows his name, he knows where he lives, lives and he knows what happened to him. Like he's just... Interesting. interesting. <laughs> yes, that's a good word. You have so seen brilliant. the gamut in Hollywood. What is, what's next for you? What, what's your passion project? I mean, I don't... I, I, honestly, I'm just grateful to be working. Mm -hmm. I really mean that. Well, in that case, your next project Applause, should be to get on, on social media. I can't believe you're no. not on Facebook, She's Twitter, not, Instagram, guys. nothing. Why are you on agita. social media? Really? Is that it? It gives me agita. It makes me nervous. <gasps> or are you nervous because people will be then investigating your life, I peeking like, in on you? I feel like I live a very private life. They don't. People don't bother me. I think I was in Us Weekly like once for something I wore. It's like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, nobody, I live a quiet life. Okay, so you're not going to be taking any thing. selfies with bikinis and putting right. them on I definitely, t I actually was just talking about that. I was like, well, so if I have this Instagram, like, what am I allowed? Because <laughs> knowing me, I'd post something totally not, like, something that I should not be posting. <laughs> well, if Rihanna can get away with it, you can too. Exactly. <laughs> You'll be all right. I Don't didn't worry. know that there were rules, though, to Instagram. Uh, a few. Yeah, yeah, we'll sign you up. You'll yeah, break, we'll we'll break, yeah. right? break some rules. Break them all. Quentin Tarantino break some rules. We'll get you covered. Don't worry. Thank you so much. And when can we see Graceland again? Wednesday night, 10 o'clock USA. All right, right thank you so much. Thank you. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.